Hello and welcome, this is Faceless Opinion, wondering if I can slide into Sapphire's DMs, welcome you back to another Skyrim video. So for today, we're going to be continuing on with our power scaling series, I already made videos for the Dragonborn, the Harbinger, and most recently, the Listener. Now it's time for the latest installment in which we take a trip over to Riften and answer the question, how powerful is the Guildmaster of the Thieves Guild? Ground rules, because we need them, even though we have gone through them so many times at this point. We are going to pretend the Dragonborn forsake their destiny and want to join the Thieves Guild. Or perhaps someone else came in and ended up becoming Guildmaster. It doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things. All that matters and what you need to know is that we're going to determine the equipment, powers, and feats that the Guildmaster acquires throughout the Thieves Guild questline and any other quests that are connected with this group. Starting with their equipment... For armor, the Guildmaster has many different sets of armor available to them. The top three being either the Nightingale armor, Guildmaster's armor, or Blackguard armor. Each one of them having their own different enchantments. Personally, I am torn on which armor set I should give. Hmm, I think I might just give it to the Guildmaster armor set since it has the highest base armor stat and is the hardest one to earn compared to the others. Though, I am open-minded if you believe that one of the other armor sets would be better. However, since I am discussing the Guildmaster armor set, let's talk about the enchantments it has. Which has increasing carry capacity by 50 pounds, making both pickpocketing and lockpicking 35% better, and makes it to where prices are 20% better. Another apparel item that the Guildmaster will have is the Amulet of Articulation, which increases speechcraft by at most 35% making it to where the Guildmaster will never fail at any persuasion attempts. Moving over to weapons, the Guildmaster will have the Nightingale Blade, which absorbs both health and stamina. Chillrend, a sword that can do both frost damage and has the ability to paralyze someone for a few seconds. The Nightingale Bow, which can fire arrows that can do both frost and shock damage. We also have the Gloves of the Pugilist, which can be acquired from one of the random people you encounter on your way to the Ragon Flagon for the first time. That makes it to where your unarmed strikes can do more damage. Is this one random? Yes, but I thought it was worth mentioning nonetheless because it is kind of unique and a little cool, even though unarmed attacks don't really matter much in Skyrim's gameplay, but whatever. Another random weapon that can be attained is the Spider Control Rod from the Dwemer Museum, which allows the Guildmaster to control a Dwarven Spider. One last thing that the Guildmaster has access to is not a weapon, but a tool. A very powerful one, that being the Skeleton Key. A Daedric artifact belonging to Nocturnal, that serves not just as an unbreakable lockpick, but can be used to unlock anything. Evident when Mercer Frey had possession of the key and used it to open Snowvale Sanctum, the Dragon Claw Puzzle Door, to even the Thieves Guild Vault. That's not all. According to Carlia, the skeleton key can be used to untap the potential of the person who has it, making it to where their potential is limitless. I guess that explains why Mercer kept the key to himself if it can do something like that. But I digress. Let's talk about magic. When it comes to magical abilities, the Guildmaster, like everyone else I mentioned beforehand, will only have access to the two spells of Flames and Healing. Though, unlike the others, the Guildmaster is shown using flames while burning down the beehives over at Golden Glow Estate. Which is pretty neat, as you don't get many options to actually use magic during quest lines. Unless you are a part of a certain college, which I am going to talk about next week. <laughs> uh, moving on to shouts, the Guildmaster only has access to one shout. That being Disarm, which blasts the weapons out of an enemy's hands which honestly sounds like a very good shout for a thief to have. When it comes to other abilities, the Guildmaster is an agent of Nocturnal, thus giving them access to three different abilities that they can do, those being the Nightingale of Shadows, Nightingale Subterfuge, and Nightingale Strife. Shadow grants the ability to turn invisible for 120 seconds. Subterfuge grants the ability of making nearby people and creatures attack one another for 30 seconds. Strife grants the ability of absorbing a large amount of health from an enemy meaning that the Guildmaster has a lot of things going on, and before anyone writes in the comments, yes, I know that the Guildmaster cannot have access to all three of these powers at the same time. However, they do have the capability of changing them out. So there is that. Now, across our journey in Skyrim, the Guildmaster will face off against numerous enemy types, such as wild animals, mercenaries, bandits, draugr, automatons, falmer, 
Reeklings, and Nightingale Sentinels. For achievements that the Guildmaster has done, we have them surviving the Ratway, sneaking into the East Empire Company's warehouse, breaking into the Dwemer Museum, getting into Mercer Frey's house, navigating the Pilgrim's Path so that they can return the Skeleton Key to the Twilight Sepulcher, leading to them becoming the Champion of Nocturnal. We also have them restoring the guild back to its former glory by reestablishing itself in the cities of Whiterun, Markarth, Windhelm, and Solitude, finding all those rare items that can be found in each main Thieves Guild quest, items like the Queen Bee statue, Bust of the Grey Fox, and the Left Eye of the Falmer, to give a very few examples, as well as being able to collect every single stone of Baron Zaya in reforging the crown of Baron Zaya. Transitioning over to combat-related feats, we have the Guildmaster facing off against Hamlin, a crazy mage who lives underneath Homing Brew Meadery, who proclaims himself the Skeever King and tries to raise a Skeever army. Believe me when I say he is as dangerous as he is crazy. Next up is Nimi, a giant frostbite spider that has caused many problems for the workers at the Nachundazel excavation site, leading to Caselmo and the other workers calling her the Poisoned One. Carrying on, we have Vald, the personal guard for Mercer Frey who protects his house from trespassers. However, the most dangerous enemy that the Guildmaster will have to contend with would be the former Guildmaster, Mercer Frey himself. As he was able to steal from the Guild for years without anybody noticing, Murder Gallus, the Guildmaster before him, pinning his death on fellow thief Carlia, snuck past every enemy type in Urkenthan to steal the eyes of the Falmer, which he did do, incapacity the likes of both Carlia and Brynjolf with magic, can turn invisible and is a specialist when it comes to dual wielding with a dagger and his sword, a dwarven sword of devouring which can siphon health. On top of all that, he is also a nightingale and has possession of the skeleton key, which we stated earlier can untap the potential of the person who holds it, meaning that Mercer was at the peak of his power and ability during their fight and the Guildmaster beat him without any help as both Carlia and Brynjolf were indisposed. Well, that covers everything that we had regarding the Guildmaster. Now it's time to answer the question, how strong is the Guildmaster? I would say they are quite strong as they would have arguably one of the biggest arsenals compared to the others I made videos on. Their capability of becoming a Nightingale does a good job of making a compelling enough case I feel like it wouldn't be a stretch that the Guildmaster is without any shadow of a doubt the greatest thief Skyrim has ever known with all the jobs that they did to restore the guild after all the damage Mercer did to it. And with all that time and effort, the Guildmaster is more than likely one of the most richest people in Skyrim as a result. Now tell me, how powerful do you think the Guildmaster of the Thieves Guild is? What do you think of my analysis? How much of a power boost do you think the Skeleton Key actually gives? Comment down below, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like and make sure you subscribe for more Skyrim Month content. Until next time, I will catch you all on the flip side.